Monday was the first day of classes at LSU, but the buzz on campus in Baton Rouge and around the state was what happened in the early Friday morning hours outside of Shady's Bar just south of campus. With Baton Rouge police wanting to interview up to four LSU players, including Jordan Jefferson, practice continued with plenty of questions. Who took the reps at quarterback today? Was there any difference than usual? Uh, well, started off Jared, started uh, a couple of drills off, but then toward the end, Jordan got uh, more of the reps for the Wichita Warrants. So Jared Lee got the first reps today? Right. We understand it's unfortunate about what happened, but we're, look, we're gonna move forward. We know that's what great football teams do. Uh, all the great ones have had, you know, and their ups and downs, but it's about how you bounce back, and we're, we've done a great job. We've had a great mentality these last couple days, and uh, we're moving forward, and uh, we got a great team. We've got a bunch of great athletes, and we're just looking forward to this season. On Tuesday, the BRPD got their wish, and the four LSU players, with their attorney, Nathan Fisher, met with police for close to three hours. On the day the four players in question met with Baton Rouge police, Coach Miles wasn't ready to say if or when suspensions would be coming. But nearly five days after the altercation outside Shady's Bar, he did expound on how this was affecting preparations for Oregon on the field. Well, I, I think there's uh, a, a little bit, you know, there's a little bit more uh, um, seriousness in our tone. I don't think, I think light laughter is not something that's happening too much around the practice field. And, um, and, and, and that's, uh, that hurts your preparation, ultimately. If you like to work hard and smile, it hurts you. But we're preparing that if a happenstance would occur. You know, I, uh, you know, the, the information that's forthcoming, you know, will certainly determine, you know, our course. He wouldn't have to wait long. After a week's worth of speculation, this was the scene Friday morning. Jefferson and backup linebacker Joshua Johns leaving East Baton Rouge Parish Jail after bonding out from second-degree battery charges. Warrants were issued for both players Friday morning. Both Jefferson and Johns turned themselves in, were booked, and promptly posted $5,000 bail. Their attorney, Nathan Fisher, feels that police rushed the case. We'll be ready just to hook it up now. Let's go on. Let's get on with it. They've ruined the kids' careers, and uh, we will uh, see what we can do to try to, you can't rectify it, but to uh, help the situation. Two hours later, Baton Rouge police held their news conference, which turned out to be a statement from Police Chief Dwayne White, which lasted less than three minutes. Today is a sad day for the city of Baton Rouge. Today is a sad day for the Louisiana State University the LSU alumni, and the countless fans that follow the Tiger football program. It is also a sad day for the Baton Rouge Police Department. The department will not comment any further on the merits or facts of this case. Thank you. Both Jefferson and Johns were suspended indefinitely by Miles, who spoke on behalf of his remorseful team following practice on Friday. It's certainly a... Uh, a tough time uh, for a team. They, they see, uh, you know, a teammate in uh, in peril. I was proud of them today because they were sick, and uh, they uh, they played hard. I told George Jefferson to defend himself fully and uh, to, you know, you know uh, participate in the, in the legal system and and, uh, and and stand his ground. I have to be very honest with you. I, I, uh, this is not, you know, how I intended to spend my pre-season uh, uh, opener. You know, I wanted to spend much more on football. And now, hopefully, he can. Wrapping up the week that was in Baton Rouge, I'm Eric Ritchie for CST Tonight.